I've never made it a secret that I really love working on the iPad and if there's one thing that I really do like it's finding new apps to be productive with and I wanted to share those ones with you today and some of these are ones I've been using for a while and some of them are brand new so I think without any further ado we should just get straight into it. Okay, so the first app I wanted to talk about is Pinterest. And I know that might feel like a strange app to start with. How can you be truly productive with an app like Pinterest, which is kind of designed as a social media now. But honestly, so much of what I do on this channel starts life on Pinterest. A lot of the videos and the kind of styles and themes I make all come from just browsing Pinterest and getting an idea of feelings and colorways and how everything looks. And a lot of the stuff that I've been doing recently has come directly from there. For instance, for me, this is where I found the new font that I've been using on the channel a lot recently. A lot of our wallpaper designs which we do over at Kuroku all start on Pinterest as a kind of collection, a research collection. And not to mention the office space I'm sitting in, including the desk setup, a lot of those ideas came directly from Pinterest. So for me, it's a really, really productive app. The only thing I will say is you have to be careful because it's designed to keep you on there now more than anything. So I recommend going in, browsing for about 10 minutes and pinning a load of stuff you like, and then getting out before you spend all of your day on there. But for me, this is probably why it's number one at the moment and of course if you do like the wallpapers that we've been making which do start life on Pinterest then I'll link those below too. The next two apps are ones that are kind of really new to me and they're Dumarks and Minimalist. I'll talk about Dumarks first because this is the one I've been using quite a lot and I actually really, really like it. Effectively, Dumarks is like a bookmark manager, but what it does is really, really useful. So say if you're in Safari on the iPad and you want to bookmark something to come back later, you can share it into Dumarks and it turns it into a to-do list as well. So when you press share to put it into Dumarks, it actually gives you a list of things which you can put it under, like a category list, and then you can and tick it off as and when you go. And what I really like about this is it's cross-platform. So it follows me around. So if I go back on Safari on my Mac, then they're all there ready to go. Or if I see something on my phone and I want to save it to do marks, then I can come back to that on my Mac or my iPad or wherever I am. I'm always redesigning my office. So whenever I see something I really like, I just add it straight into do marks under the office section. And then I can come back to it and buy it or check it out later when I'm on my computer or something like that. The second one of those two new apps is Minimal List. Minimal List is like a to-do list, but it's like crazy minimal as the name suggests. But one of the things that I really, really like about it is it incorporates the Pomodoro technique for getting stuff done. So for an example, you add something to the list and then if you tap on it, it gives you a 25 minute timer to get whatever that thing is done. And if you don't get it done within that 25 minutes, you get a five minute break to grab a cup of tea or something to eat or to chill out. And then you come back for your second Pomodoro section, which gives you another 25 minutes of working. I use this mainly when I'm filming Instagram reels and I give myself 25 minutes to film a reel, edit it, and get it uploaded because I tend to find if I spend too long on Instagram reel, I overthink it completely and I end up wasting way too much of my day. So it's been really good for staying on top of those sorts of things. The Pomodoro technique is usually for studying, but it's been really useful for me to make sure I just don't waste time. Also, if you pay five pounds, I think it is to unlock the full version. It will add background sounds for you as well. So you can have water running or, you know, a fireplace crackling away or rain outside or something like that, which can help you study. So yeah. That's another app that I've really been enjoying. So for the next app, I can't make this video in good conscience without talking about Microsoft To Do. I spoke about this last year when I made this video, but honestly, for me, Microsoft To Do is my be all and end all on how I run my days. At its core, To Do is a really simple list making app. You add things on it and you tick them off as you go, but there is loads of things you can do to it to make it a lot more involved, like you can work on things in a team and you can add steps to each thing that you mark down. But for me, I love having it really, really simple. Before I start working every morning, I'll make a list on Microsoft To Do of all the things that I need to get done today. And it really sets me out of the things that I need to do because I know if I put something on Microsoft To Do, it means I have to get it done before the day is over. However, there is one feature which I use on it quite a lot. And that's if I don't quite get to something, which obviously does happen. I work for myself, so I procrastinate a lot. You can tap into anything that you've set and just set it due for tomorrow, which is what I do a lot. And then I make sure it gets done tomorrow. And I know there's loads of much better list takers out there and I know some people even integrate their to-do list straight into Notion but for me Microsoft to do is just the one that I always come back to it served me so well for so long and I really love it I would not go anywhere about it and it follows me around so if I'm on Mac or if I'm on my iPhone then Microsoft to do is there ready to go and I really really love how it works 
And speaking of my phone, I did want to take a moment to thank the sponsor of this video, Rhino Shield. Rhino Shield is known for creating the most protective and custom phone cases out there, and they just launched their brand new phone, Grip. The Grip is a customizable and eco-friendly way to hold your phone in a comfortable and secure way for hours on end. If you use a bigger phone like I do, you'll know that holding it with one hand always feels like a balancing act. But with the grip, you can get a firm and solid one-handed experience on your device. While it is great for that, it also snaps out as a kickstand in either landscape or portrait for group photos, viewing content, or even video calls. There's two sizes to the grip, a mini and max, so it'll work well with any device. It's made from 85% recycled bottles, so it's eco-friendly, and there's a massive array of designs to choose from. You can even upload your own artwork to make your own, which is really cool. If you've got MagSafe on your iPhone, then these attach directly with a strong magnetic pull, and they work seamlessly with Rhino Shield's new MagSafe compatible cases too, so there's no chance of it coming loose. So if this is something you'd like to check out, then follow the link in the description and use the code BITE for 20% off in the first week. And thanks again to Rhino Shield for sponsoring this video. Next up is making use of lo-fi stations to make sure that I don't have to fill my brain up with picking songs or music or anything like that. Last year when I talked about my favourite apps, I mentioned something called Pool Suite FM, which I use quite a lot still, but there's no iPad specific app yet. You can download the iPhone one, but it's just a bit meh on the iPad screen. So something I've been using a lot recently, and it's something you've probably seen in these videos because I've got one playing right now, is these lo-fi playlists that I found on YouTube. And these are all about four or five hours long, so I often have these playing in the background whenever I'm doing any form of work on the iPad. I use the YouTube app for this, but you could do it in the Safari browser as well. But I generally find this is really helpful because I don't have to think about what music I want to play, which is a really good way of procrastinating. So yeah, for me, lo-fi is an absolute essential to get my work done. And actually when I was a teacher, I used to put it on in the background for class as well, which seemed to help the students focus. I've also got to mention my favourite note taker because this wouldn't be a productivity iPad app video without one. And for me, the one I always come back to is GoodNotes 5. I've actually got a really deep dive on note taking apps for the iPad, so I'll link this up here and I'll put it below as well so you can have a look over all of them. But for me, GoodNotes is the one that I always come back to and I just really like using. One of the things that did come up in that video though is that note takers are quite subjective. So you might find GoodNotes really good and then some people might find things like Notability way, way better. It really depends on what you need to do. For me, GoodNotes 5 has this kind of mix of feeling like a notebook, giving you plenty of customization options, and it's quite well organized too. And overall, I just like how the whole app feels. It's also free now, so you can use it for a small amount of time. And a lot of other note takers have switched to a monthly subscription thing. And I'm not huge on that monthly payment thing for note takers, but for me, it's gotta be GoodNotes 5. Okay, last up in these apps, I've got to talk about Notion. And you've probably heard a lot about Notion unless you're already using it. But Notion is effectively my entire brain dumped into one app for everything I do here on YouTube. It's got all of my goals, all of my video ideas, most of my scripts. It's got equipment lists of things I want to get. And it just does so much. It's difficult to explain in a short thing about how much Notion does do and how much it can do. But what I would say about Notion is last year, I was very new to it and I felt very worried about getting into it because it looks like such a complicated app. And trust me, some people make it very, very complicated, but it doesn't have to be. My Notion setup is actually really, really simple and it mostly consists of lists and tables, but that's been absolutely fine for me and it's been really useful just to get everything out of my brain into one place. You could probably take most of the apps I talked about and condense them all down into Notion, but um, I'm not that good at Notion and I generally just use it on quite a simple basis. The only thing I will say is the iPad app doesn't feel amazing compared to what's on Mac, but it's nice because it's on iPhone and Mac and Windows and wherever. So like many of these apps, it follows you around. And for me, someone that works across lots of different devices, that's super useful. So yeah, I do really like Notion. And lastly, I did want to talk about Universal Control, which I know isn't an iPad app, and I know I've talked about it quite a lot on this channel because I really, really love it. But I'm gonna mention it again because it has upped my productivity hugely. Universal Control allows you to control your iPad with the same mouse and keyboard that you're using for your Mac or MacBook Pro. And it's just a really nice way to have a second smart monitor attached to your Mac or to your MacBook. I use it all the time for doing a lot of these app-based things on there or for just 
having my notes open when I'm working on a bigger project. But yeah, I really like it and it's not in development or anything like that. This is a full release of that. So Universal Control works really well at the moment and I really encourage you to have a look at it if you haven't already. And that brings me to a wider point with iPadOS 16 on the horizon, or it's coming very soon, it might already be out if you're watching this video a bit later, is the amount of stuff that's coming to the iPad soon, which is gonna make it a productivity kind of powerhouse, is just really awesome. I've had a go of it recently, making an entire desk setup with Stage Manager, and using it like that was really, really great. So that's gonna be really worth looking at too. In terms of creative apps like LumaFusion and Procreate and Lightroom and Photoshop and all of those other ones, they haven't actually changed since last year. So don't feel like I need to mention them again, but bear in mind that I am still using those apps pretty much on the day to day and they're still as great as they ever were. And that pretty much rounds up this video about all the apps that I've been really loving recently, especially in a productivity sense. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, pop a like on the way out, that'd be massive. And also tell me in the comments below if there's any that you really think I should check out. There's some that have been on my list for a while, but I just haven't really got around to them. But if you really think there's something that I need to have a look at, then let me know. And of course, be sure to check out Rhino Shield and grab a discount off of my code. Anyway, as always, I will see you all in the next one.